hurts like a motherfucker in the cold, don't it? Fuck, man, that was unnecessary. My bounce. Now, this is Classic Tommy, and this is what we've been missing. This cancelling of Christmas, with a hint of comedy from classic one-liners, that only sounds right coming from Tommy Egan. But when he left New York, the intentions were always to go and link up with Rodolfo in LA, and Chicago was only to, supposed to be a quick pit stop, where he wanted to close an old wound, and all he came to do was visit his grandma's grave. But the old wound which was Miriam Egan, opened up a lot more family secrets, because 1. She was alive, and 2. This led Tommy to finding out that he has a half-brother, and that was JP Gibbs. This is a secret that Kate has been keeping from Tommy his entire life. And if some of you are wondering what this tattoo and the word behind Tommy's photo meant, it's an Irish saying which means I like you or I love you, which is why Tommy probably was going to drop flowers off to his grandma's grave, because she probably loved Tommy a lot more than Kate did. But not only did Tommy find his brother, he found the Chicago drug game, thanks to Simon and Vic Flynn. And the reason why he changed his mind in staying in Chicago was a combination of uncovering his family secrets, finding a new love interest in Gloria, and of course, realizing there was a way he can make his mark on the drug scene in Chicago. So in this video, we're going to look at how Tommy encountered JP Gibbs and what's next for their relationship, but also how they tease some more secrets and possibly more family that Tommy doesn't know of. But we're also going to have a look at a connection between Tommy and Gloria and how finding the drug game changed his mind in linking up with Rodolfo in LA. But let's start from the beginning, and that's with Tommy driving into Chicago, because he was at crossroads in his life, where he was having flashbacks of Spanky, Kate, Holly, Raina, Tariq, and Lakeisha, but it was when he had the vision of Ghost, which gave him purpose to go on in life and continue, and in essence, Ghost may be dead, but Casper the Ghost is just getting started. But this is when Tommy found out the first lie from Kate. He found out his grandma, Miriam Egan, was still alive, and this is when we also realized they were putting a lot more groundwork and depth into Tommy's background, and Force is going to be just more than Tommy cancelling Christmas. This first episode showed us that Tommy has not only asked to build from the bottom in terms of his drug organization, but he needs to start over with his new relationships with his family, who he never knew existed, and the other various people that he's going to come across, for example, Gloria, Diamond, and Walter Flynn. So instead of visiting his grandma at her grave, he went to go visit her at Mulhern's, a nursing home. But for some reason, Tommy couldn't bring himself to go and speak to his grandma because he wasn't ready, and maybe because he was just scared that she wouldn't remember who he was and what other lies and secrets he'd find out that Kate had been keeping from him. So what changed his mind from walking away to coming back and speaking to his grandma? There is definitely a few. Now in between, he met Gloria, and they definitely connected in more ways than one. Gloria is so much like Tommy in so many ways, because she's got a huge hole in her life from her husband who deployed and never came back. And this is definitely something to keep our eyes on by the way. Who is Gloria's husband? Will we hear more or possibly even see him? They connected instantly because she cooks Jamaican level dishes and Tommy loves Jamaican food. But she wasn't talking about Tommy's pepper pot soup being ready for him. She was definitely talking about herself because she definitely loved the fight that she saw when he smashed Simon for putting hands on Gloria. But they also connected mainly because she understands how much pain Tommy's in because she said this. Wrong people always seem to die. When you're the one left behind, you gotta wonder what you're supposed to do about it. And this is a position that Tommy finds himself in. He's the only one left behind, apart from a very few other people. That includes Tariq, Tasha, and Yaz. Everybody else is pretty much dead to him. So connecting with Gloria was him trying to fill this huge void in his life. But I really don't think it is as easy as this for Tommy. In the power world, it really hasn't been that long since he's lost Lakeisha. And the memory of Lakeisha is definitely still fresh. As is Gloria's relationship with Vic Flynn. This is a scene from the season trailer for Powerbook 4 Force. So she's going to be back and forth between Tommy and Vic. So this whole situation is going to be so complex in so many ways. Especially because Walter Flynn is someone who's mapped out both Vic and Claude's future for them. But Tommy also found the drug game when he brutally smashed Simon and decided to not take Uncle Paulie's advice in messing with the Flynn family because all his power fans know he's someone who doesn't take orders too well. So he went to the location where Vic and Simon were supposed to meet this connect called Zaymost, someone who tried to screw both Vic and the CBI. So Zaymost is just like Gloria's husband, is another character that we may need to keep our eyes open for. But Tommy definitely realized, after taking Janard and Vic's drugs and money and meeting Walter Flynn, there is definitely a market that he can step into, even though he does respect the people that respect him. For example, Uncle Paulie and Walter Flynn. I think we're going to see this level of respect between the two characters, but it doesn't mean that Tommy is going to back down. He's here to stay, and he's here to build his own organization. 
We even see him doing his research on the Flins and the Chicago Brothers Incorporated, which we're going to look at in more detail in tomorrow's video. But then the following day, he decided to do what he came to do, and that was visit his grandma, Miriam Egan. And she did remember him, despite the last time them seeing each other was when Tommy was 4 years old. But you can tell, she's definitely sick, and she definitely suffers some form of dementia, because she forgets instantly. And ironically, that's the story of Tommy's life, exactly what Kate Egan said to him. People enter his life, but they never last long. But one relationship that may last long is JP Gibbs. But for some strange reason, he was spying on Tommy as he went to go visit his grandma. But both of them put two and two together about how they were half-brothers, which was definitely a lot to process for both of them. But let's have a look at JP Gibbs in more detail. Now he's a gifted jazz musician who toured several continents, hence why he said he didn't want to smoke because it would fuck with his voice. But developing a rich worldliness that comes through his swagger and collage of diverse tattoos, JP owns and operates a blues jazz club with his ailing father that's been the target of several attacks from local gang members. As rich as JP Gibbs' life is, he still carries the pain of never having a mother in his life and having a son he has no relationship with. Now, JP's world is thrown off its axis when he crosses paths with Tommy. And isn't everybody's world thrown off its axis when they meet Tommy? That goes for Gloria, Vic, Simon, the rest of the Flynn family, and Diamond as well. Tommy was definitely shocked, but kind of wasn't at the same time that he had a brother, because he's not surprised that Kate kept such a huge secret from him. But to be fair, she always did talk about this other son, which we thought she meant by James St. Patrick, which she definitely was on most occasions, but sometimes, she may well have been talking about JP Gibbs, because we all know how crazy and coked up she was 24-7. But what I do believe we need to pay more close attention to in this scene, is how JP Gibbs questioned Tommy and asked him, is there any more of us? And Tommy said, fuck knows with her. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see us being introduced to more family down the line, because as I said, they are definitely giving more depth to Tommy's character in force. But as Tommy always does, he says it how it is and tells JP nobody calls her Catherine because she's not royalty and she definitely isn't worth his trouble or tears and she is definitely dead to Tommy as we all know from the ending of Power. But even though Kate is dead to Tommy, she's not dead in the world of power, so there is always the possibility of her popping up at some point in force, and who knows, maybe even meeting JP Gibbs. And I can see this happening, for example at Miriam Egan's funeral, if she does die at some point in force, where we would be introduced to more of Tommy's family, and possibly Kate's reintroduction. But JP definitely has his own issues to worry about with his own son, who he doesn't have a relationship with. So Tommy's also got a nephew, who I'm sure we'll be introduced to at some point in force, and maybe even JP's father, who runs his jazz club with him. A direct nod to Ghost and his father in my opinion, how his father owned a jazz club and Ghost owned Truth. And just before we finish, as Tommy is supposedly this Casper the Ghost, I wonder if Ghost has any secret letters lined up for Tommy, the same way he did for Tariq in Power Book 2 Ghost. Arguably it would be a bit more difficult, because nobody knew that Tommy would end up in Chicago, so I do think it is more likely that we'd see a Kanan hallucination scene because Kanan is someone who is probably better placed to guide Tommy because they both have the same mentality, live by the street and die by the street. Whereas Ghost, he wanted to lead the game from the very first episode of Power. So a Kanan hallucination scene is something I definitely wouldn't rule out considering Tommy is going to start building his own organization from the bottom. So with that being said, Drop all your thoughts down below on Tommy's relationships that have been revealed in episode 1 with JP, Gloria and the Flynn family. And of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 4 Force and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.